Hello world and welcome back to another episode of Batania where today we're going to be covering everything Sparks as well as the Batania crafting and storage systems. Starting off we're going to go over Sparks itself. So we've covered Sparks a little bit in the past but let's go back to basics and start again. First to make a Spark you're going to need any two different types of flowers, two blazes and a golden nugget and this will give you a Spark. The main reason for a spark is sending mana without using a spreader as it's more efficient but only works in close-knit vicinities. For example, to make a terrestrial ingot we know that we need to drop all three of these items onto a uh, plate here and when you drop it down what's going to happen is the spark is going to send the power necessary to this plate if you actually get it all onto the plate. <laughs> So now we know how sparks basically work, but you can actually augment these with four different augments. Each augment is made the exact same way but using a slightly different basic elemental rune. So starting off with a dispersive augment, we've got to create this with the rune of water and this is, allows a spark to drain any mana pool that it's touching into your uh, mana holding items. So if I hold a mana tablet and then let's get ourselves a spark here, place this on this creative one and then if we get a disperser, all you have to do is right click it on the machine or on the spark and then as you can see it starts flowing towards me and it's filling up my mana tablet. Of course once it's finished filling it will stop doing that. Next up we've got the dominant augment. This is going to use a fire rune and what this will do is going to pull mana from any nearby sparks that have a full pull and it will pull it into this one but it only works against non-augmented sparks as you see here so if we get ourselves our sparks here we'll place it on all of these and then we'll get our dominant spark when we place this down we'll see that it's taking from all four of these and filling up our pool here next up we have got the recessive spark augment this is going to be made with an earth rune and what this will do is it's actually going to drain the mana pool it's connected to and send it to any non-augmented spark or a dispersory spark like that over there to fill up your mana pools so if we get a brand new mana a tablet here and we'll place all these sparks down and then let's place all these sparks down what we'll do is we'll get a uh, we'll get a dispersive on this left one here as I have my mana tablet and then we'll put a recessive onto this one now what's going to happen is it's going to connect to all of these but then the one that's got the recessive spark on that is filling me permanently. The last spark we have is the isolated spark. This is made using the rune of air and this is going to stop the spark from actually talking to other systems. So if I have here a handful of different sparks in this creative one what we can do is put this isolated spark onto this pool here and then we can get a dominant um, spark here and place it here. As you can see all three of these are now being filled from this one but the isolated spark isn't being pulled because it is of course isolated. When it comes to sparks as well there's one more thing you can do and that's craft the spark tinkerer. This is made with three pieces of living rock, one redstone dust and two elementium ingots. What this is going to do is when placed next to a spark receiving item such as a mana pool like this it's going to be able to toggle whatever augments are inside of it when giving it a redstone signal. So what we could have here is if we get ourselves a hovering hourglass here and a item frame, what we can do is place a spark down. Let's first off, let's put a dominant spark in it. And then what we can do is we have a recessive spark on here, as you see here. So what we can do, this spark is, this one over here is empty. So we'll keep that there and we won't have any augment on this. Now, if we put our hovering hourglass on top of it and then let's give it say five seconds of delay, we'll place that in here. What's going to happen is this is going to toggle as you can see in a second. It toggles and now this is recessive and it's starting to fill the next pool. After five seconds again, it will change back to dominant and we'll take it all back. This is a good way of having a one pool sort of mana battery. You could have it as a dispersive and also a dominant surrounded by other mana pools that are being filled. Then every sort of say 10 minutes you could have it switch between a dominant and a recessive, uh, dominant and dispersive refilling the dispersive mana pool. Now that's everything when it comes to sparks and their augments, but there is a very cool thing that you can do inside of Batania that is changing the way sparks work entirely. And this is through Batania's own crafting and storage system. To get started with this system, you're going to need a corporate spark and a master corporate spark. The corporate spark is made with a regular spark, one piece of pixie dust and an ender air bottle. If you want to know how to get an ender air bottle, then watch the previous video. 
Now you're going to need a lot of these corporate sparks as they're the main source of connections between all your things inside. However, you will only need one master corporate spark made with a corporate spark and a dragonstone for each different corporate system. So the very basics of a corporate system consist of three things. A attachable storage block, such as a chest, the corporate spark for connections, and the master corporate spark for the brain. So inside of this system, we have got three corporate sparks, all connected to the chest, and a master corporate spark. See how things are connected? You just take your wand of the forest and right-click on any spark. As you can see, I've got mine connected to the ones laced down the line as well. Now there is a distance to the corporate sparks, you have to have the chest of course and the corporate spark, but this only goes up to about 8 blocks, so if I go all the way over here and put on a spark, it will not link, however if I put something into the centre here, it should link all of them together. So technically there is an infinite distance you could have these corporate systems, however you have to have these intermittent um, sort of corporate chest storage areas in order to make it go further and further. So taking a look inside this corporate system now, inside of these chests I have them filled, one with cobblestone, one with carrots, and one with seeds. Now inside this system, the corporate spark that has the master will not actually have anything in it, and even if you put stuff in, the system will not see it, so make sure this chest is always empty. So that's great, we have this corporate system how they're in the system, but what can I do with it at the moment, it's just regular chests. This is where you can first do things by monitoring your system. So if we come over here, we can make a corporate crystal cube. This is made with a corporate spark, a alfpask, and a dream wood log. Now, when you place this down, they will not look like this. They will be completely blank. In order to actually have these show a different item, you're first going to need to get said item. So let's just drop down a seed here. And then when we right click the seed with this crystal, we can see that it joins the system. However, it's not actually being able to see anything. Even though this is, um, we definitely have seeds in the system, it's not being seen because you need to have a corporate spark on top of it. Now the corporate spark is connected, it's now connected to the system and you can see how many seeds are inside. As we can see, we have 255. Now to take an item out of this system, you're first going to have to be in survival mode of course, and when you left click, you will take one item out of the system. If you hold shift and right click, you will take out a whole stack. Now the problem is with this is that you can actually switch this at any point. So if I get this chest here and place this in, I'll know it's changed and we don't know how many seeds are in the system now and you want to keep using this. What you can do is obviously re reassign it to seeds and with your wand of the forest, you want to shift right click and this will lock it. Now if I right click this with any other thing, it will say, oh no, you've got to unlock it first to change it, but now you won't unlock it. Now the cool thing about this as well is that if you do drain this all the way to zero, it won't disappear. It will just say there is zero in the system. Now the only problem with this system is that this can only take things out, it can't actually put anything in, so you will actually need to have a manually way of putting things inside, or a vanilla storage system where you have your uh, waters and everything, placing things around, but if you're playing modded you probably have pipes. There's no way of putting these into the system as it's all based on chests. However, there are automatic ways of taking things out of the system without being there manually next to these things, and that is by using a corporate funnel. The corporate funnel is made using one dropper here and a spark, and they will get one of these in total. Now, I'm going to set up a little system here using just these items in the system in order to automatically take things out. So to build a system like this, it's going to be very sim simple. We're first going to need a chest, then we're going to need our corporate funnel on top. This corporate funnel will now be sort of linked to this chest, um, but only in specific ways. Now, first, we obviously need to actually have this linked to our, our, our entire system. So let's place down a corporate spark on here. And then with our wand of the forest, we can see that this should be now connected like you can see there. Now by itself this funnel isn't actually going to do anything at all which is kind of annoying. You are going to need an item frame. When you place an item frame on it this is how you are going to essentially whitelist blocks that you want this funnel to drop. So we know that we have got cobblestone, carrots and seeds inside the system. So when we place down cobblestone nothing is actually going to happen. We, all we've done is whitelist this block to say just take cobblestone out of the system. Now in order to take cobblestone out of the system, you are going to have to give this a redstone signal. This is where we're going to take a hovering hourglass right here. So we can shift right click this on top and this is going to actually get, well it doesn't have to shift right click, you can right click this on top and it will place it actually inside the same part where the corporate spark is. It's very good, You can there's no collisions, you can have things in the same place. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to place a 10 second timer in here and what's going to happen is that this is going to slowly drain and then eventually put cobblestone inside of here. Now we can't open this as we have the funnel on top. Now you can't, you can place a hopper in between here. It does work just fine but if you want to have condensed systems I recommend using the spectator as this is a way of seeing stuff that's inside. So if we get ourselves some uh, cobblestone here just like this and then um if we grab ourselves some cobblestone and then put our cobblestone back in the system, what we can do is have this count down to 10 seconds. Now, the way the spectator works is that this will glow when there's cobblestone inside it because I'm holding cobblestone. So after 10 seconds go, this is going to drop one cobblestone into the chest, as you can see there. Now, the cool thing about this system as well is that the item frame can actually change how much cobblestone you want to drop at once. As you can see over there, it's going to change by one and now it's gone down by one in the system. Now, every time I rotate this item frame, it's going to increase the amount it's going to drop. If I click on it once, that now it's going to take out two out of the system. So let's just go to 305, as you can see here. I'll right click it again, it's going to go to four. That's going to take that down to 301. As we can see there, if I right click again, this is going to go to 8, again it goes to 16, then 32, then 48, and then a whole stack. That is the highest it's going to be able to go, and you can see a whole stack has now been taken out of the system. Okay, now that's great and all, but what if I want to take out multiple items? Now, luckily, one funnel can actually take out multiple items as well. Obviously, you can only go up to 4, unless... Okay, it can go up to 5, and you might even be able to do the bottom as well. There you go. This item, this single funnel can take out six different items into the same inventory if you so wish. So if you want to have this, actually, I'll explain that in a bit. So what we can do here is now if we place a carrot on here and then obviously a seed, we'll just have the seed go a couple of times and the carrots go a couple of more times. When we put our hovering hourglass on the top here, not like that though, let's take that off. When we put our hovering hourglass in here and let's just make it five seconds, what's going to happen is every five seconds, this is going to dump an item into here however there is no way of knowing which item it's going to do it's going to pick either a seed carrot or cobblestone completely at random there is no type of um you know round robin sort of thing it's not going to just do it over time but it will obviously pick things up as you can see here seeds and carrots are now inside this chest as well now the cool thing about this is that there's actually a third way of getting items out of your system if you so wish, and this is by using the corporate index. This is made using four pieces of obsidian, a corporate spark, two ender air bottles, and two dragon stones. Now with this, what you're gonna have to do is place it on the ground and then to attach it to the system, guess what? You need to put a corporate spark on it. This is gonna link everything to the system as we see here. Now when we walk close to it, we can see that these sparks come up. This is our working area. Now what do I mean by this? The way the corporate spark works here, or this corporate index works, is you can take items out of your system by using the chat menu. Now it's very, very in detail on what you can take out, but we know in our system that we have got seeds carrots and cobblestone so if i just type in here carrots what's going to happen is that it's going to take out one carrot if i want to take out more let's say i want to take out three carrots now that's pretty cool now the other thing is this can actually see suffixes so if i say three carrots and have an s on the end it's still going to work another thing it do it can do is actually see other types of numeral things that people will type now what do i mean by this if i say three times carrots it's still going to work every single it's very very inclusive of all the different things people would say now this can also work with other things as well so if i want to take out a stack of carrots i can just say stack carrots this will give me one stack what i can say is actually take half a stack and there's none left in the system oh, i said half a stack of carrots that's why no, i didn't say carrots there you go half a stack of carrots wonderful stuff now the cool thing about this is i actually go even more in depth what i can say is stack and 20 carrots and this is going to give me 84 carrots so it's very very in depth we can have a total amount if i wanted to now something else that's pretty cool with this index is what i can do is if i hold an item in my hand i can just say this and it's going to give me the item that i am holding as well as that inside the system here what you can do is go into your keybinds and then look up batania and you'll have to set a keybind it's the only keybind for batania and that is the core pre-request system i have set this to zero as you can see here so what you can do is if you go over into the checks box or sorry if you go into jei and you can do this from jei as well if i hit zero here i'll give me one if i hit zero in my inventory it'll give me one if I hold shift and press zero, it will still just give me one for some reason. If I hold control, it will give me half a stack. Shift and this number should give you a full stack. 
There you go. Apparently, because it's set to zero, it doesn't work. I've switched mine to the letter J now. So if I hold shift and press J, it's going to give me a full stack. If I hold control, it's going to give me half a stack. And if I press both, it's going to give me a quarter of a stack. Now for the rest of this, I'm just going to read from the book. Basically, you can do other things as well. If you have a asterisk in the name of any word, this could have you actually give you anything that has the asterisk. So as you can see, this uh, nether rack here with an asterisk could actually end up giving you a uh, nether rack or it could give you nether brick as it all has as it has this nethek together in it so it can give you any sort of variant that's close to as well as that it can do simple other things like it can do ellipses for example this will give you anything with uh that same iron in the name so if you have iron helmet iron sword iron chest plate if you did iron with ellipses what it's going to do is going to give you any one of those items that has that inside as well as this you can use the squiggly line plus or question mark if you just want to query things one last thing i will say you can do is that if you want to say count you can uh, see how much of an item you can have you can say at uh, count carrot or you can say uh, display carrot and all these other things and the last thing you can do is you can say all carrots and this is a bad idea as it gives you everything so that was a bit of a long-winded process but how can we do this in practice what we can do is first make a corporal interceptor the corporate interceptor is used made using a block of redstone and a corporate spark now how this works is I've got this system set up here. If in the index we want to request something that isn't in the system, the corporate interceptor will actually be able to tell whether that item is in the system or not. And if it isn't, it's going to be able to hold that item and send out a regstone signal. So we want to make or get a furnace from our system. Now we know a furnace is not in our system. But what we can do is set up a system like this to have it automatically work with everything we have shown. So what we have here is we've got our interceptor here and what it's done is whitelisted the furnace. Now by itself, if I just had this place down, the interceptor won't be able to tell anything. Similar to the funnel, you have to whitelist it to certain items. So we have this whitelisted to the furnace here. Now of course you need to link it as well with the corporate funnel. Now I have this with a redstone link up to a funnel here and it can drop up to eight cobblestone at a time, similar to how we showed earlier. This is going into a hopper and into a crafty crate and this crafty crate has a whitelist on it or a filter on it so nothing can actually be placed in the center. That means if we put eight cobblestone into this crafty crate it should make one furnace as you see here. So what I can do is now say in here I want furnace and it will say there's no furnaces in the system. But what we'll do is we'll send a redstone signal to this crafty crate into the crafty crate and then inside this chest we have a furnace. Now of course that's great and all we have a furnace but I didn't actually get my items. So let's place furnace in here again. We're gonna have this work again and this will prove that the furnace is going to work. Just like so, it just takes a couple of seconds. What I can do is then have to place the furnace again and then it will give me my furnace. But how about what if you don't want to have to request it twice? What if you want to have it right then and there straight away? What you can do is actually make something called a retainer. The corporate retainer is made with a chest and a corporate spark and this is going to remember the last thing that the interceptor managed to find. It only can remember one thing at a time, but you can have multiple retainers next to the same interceptor. So here we've got a slightly bigger system. We want to request a chest. Now the retainer itself we have over here, this is going to retain our interceptor's request of a chest. Now the retainer itself, it doesn't have to be whitelisted as it's going to retain anything that is next to the interceptor. However, I believe you can put a retainer on it. If you had multiple retainers onto the interceptor, you could whitelist each one to remember a specific thing. Now, the retainer is going to, what it basically does, is going to send the same signal request that the interceptor found one more time when it receives a redstone signal. Now, you can resend this signal as many times as it wants, which is why we have the hovering hourglass, and it will keep saying it until it does it, and then once it is completed, it will remove that retainer, which is pretty cool. So here we have got a redstone uh, system here for a chest. The chest is going to want to get some planks So we have the planks coming in here to make the chest However, what if the there are no planks in the system? This is where we have another interceptor. This is going to send a redstone signal to a Oak log and this is going to actually place the oak log in here and give us planks So then the retainer is going to request for the planks again and then that will make the chest very complicated system but here we have an 
a uh, index here to show how this works. So if I now just say chest, it's going to blink everything very quickly. It's quickly gone to go make redstone logs. Then this is going to time out. It's going to switch. That's now made the redstone signal and it's gone into the chest. So this item here should now have a chest in it, which it does. So this allows us to request this again. And there we go. We've got a chest completely from scratch. Now I know this doesn't quite tell us how we don't have to say our command again, but what we can do is have a interceptor on this here and have that linked to a chest and retainer and it will do it again. And something you can do with this to take this one step further and that is by having a dedicated amount of items inside of your system at all times. So say we wanted to always have one chest of uh, chests. Now obviously that's a little bit overkill but this is something you could do. Inside this chest here we have got a full set of chests as you can see here. This is giving a comparator signal all the way up to 15 which is reaching to our funnel. Now I don't know why it is but you have to have the setup like this. If you have the funnel directly on top for whatever reason it does not give the uh, the redstone signal of the comparator and I, I really don't know why it just doesn't do it. Probably some sort of quasi mentality sort of thing but yeah. So it has to be like this as you see here. So. What we can do is say we take out one stack of chests here. This is going to make this comparator signal zero. Now, every time the hovering hourglass works, it's going to switch around and say, oh, yeah, please uh, make more for me and I will give you some more. So this is going to do the previous system as this is requesting. This is saying, oh, no, we've got no requests. So make this. Oh, no, we've got no requests. Make this. It's going to keep making them and it's going to every 10 seconds do another repeat. And this is only taking a handful of seconds to actually do. So this is giving a new request every single time and then once this chest actually gets to full it's going to send a redstone signal powering this funnel permanently and that will negate the hovering hourglass from any from working anymore so you're not going to keep making chests after that point you may get a couple of extra snagglers or stragglers inside the hoppers but you won't have uh, any more coming to the system then the moment you end up using one stack um, or enough to make this go down by one then it will start auto crafting again but for now, guys, that is everything when it comes to Sparks and the Corporate system. I hope it wasn't too complicated. It's a little bit confusing at some times, but I hope that I explained it well. If this video did help you out in any way, shape, or form, then please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It would really help me out. And ring the bell button to stay notified when these videos go live. If you would like to know how to get some more of these ender bottles and how to actually defeat the, the ritual of Gaia, the guardian of Gaia, then click the video on screen now to figure out how to get the next tier of advanced items inside of Britannia.